In 2013, Bong Joon-ho tricked Harvey Weinstein into letting him keep his favorite scene in Snowpiercer. Snowpiercer turns 10 years old today, give or take, so here are some things I bet you never knew about it. The story of Snowpiercer starts in France in 1982, when Jacques Loeb and Jean-Marc Rochette first released its source material. The graphic novel Le Transpersonnage, which literally translates to Snowpiercer. Bong Joon-ho first discovered the graphic novel in a comic book shop near Hong Kik University in 2005, and read the entire thing while standing in front of the bookshelf where he found it. He showed it to his friend, old boy director Park Chan-wook, who then acquired the film rights to the books through his company Moho Film for Bong Joon-ho to direct. Director Bong wrote the first drafts of the film, and then Kelly Masterson came on to help him rewrite it, after director Bong was impressed with his work on Before the Devil Knows You're Dead. An earlier version of the movie had a romantic subplot for the main character, but it was eventually dropped. Director Bong explained that rather than cutting material from the graphic novel, he just rewrote the whole story to fit a two-hour running time. And this would be his first English-language film. Chris Evans personally contacted director Bong for an audition for the movie. Director Bong was initially hesitant to cast Evans in the film because he thought he was a caricature of the American all-muscle. But he was quickly won over when they met, finding the actor actually very sensitive with a quiet and introverted side, calling him a very, very smart person. Bong was also won over by Chris Evans' performances in Puncture and Sunshine. And he said the hardest part of casting Evans was hiding his muscles and his physique. John Hurt once called director Bong as clever as Hitchcock and one of the best directors he ever worked with. Hurt's character's name Gilliam is named after Terry Gilliam. The role of Mason was originally supposed to be a man, and director Bong met with John C. Riley for the part. But after meeting with Tilda Swinton, he changed the role to a woman, though he intentionally left some lines calling Mason a man in the script. Swinton based the character on monstrous, maniacal, political clowns, including Margaret Thatcher, Gaddafi, and Berlusconi. The Yorkshire accent came from an early authority figure from her childhood. Tilda Swinton spent two hours in the makeup chair each day for the role. According to co-writer Kelly Masterson, Jamie Bell improvised a lot of his performance. He was 26 years old when he was playing a 17-year-old in the movie. Ed Harris was the last person to be cast and was actually suggested by Park Chan-wook. Snowpiercer secured a budget of $42 million, which at the time was the most expensive movie ever made with Korean investors. Director Bong initially wanted to shoot it in South Korea, but instead filmed at Barandov Studios in Prague because it was able to accommodate four full-size, 100-ton train cars being lined up back-to-back to, back to allow for continuous one-shots throughout the cars. They put the train cars on this giant gyroscopic gimbal that would roll from side to side, bend realistically, and provide the vibrations to make it feel like the train car was moving. Director Bong said sometimes those gimbals would make the cast and crew motion sick. The production design team ended up designing 26 train car interiors total, and all of the interiors were filmed with the tail of the train at the left and the engine at the right to give audiences the comprehension of where the characters were going. The protein blocks were made of seaweed, tangle, sugar, and gelatin, and the drawings in the tail section of the train were illustrated by Jean-Marc Rochette, the original artist of the graphic novel. Production took 72 days total. In addition to practical effects, there was a lot of CGI as well. More than 70 artists worked on the 186 VFX shots in the film, nearly 50 of which were fully computer generated. The most difficult visual effects shots were the aquarium car and the exteriors of the train. The Weinstein Company acquired the U.S. rights to Snowpiercer while it was still filming in 2012. But when it came time to release the film, Harvey Weinstein demanded that 25 minutes be cut out of the movie. He wanted less dialogue, more action, and specifically asked for the fish gutting scene to be removed. That was director Bong's favorite shot in the film. So he lied to Harvey Weinstein and said his father was a fisherman and that scene was a tribute to his father. In response, Harvey Weinstein agreed to let director Bong keep the scene. Director Bong's father was not a fisherman. Then Weinstein did a test screening of his cut down version that went poorly, so he demanded even more be cut out. Meanwhile, a screening of director Bong's original full edit tested much higher. When news leaked that Harvey Weinstein was trying to cut down the movie, there was a whole petition to quote free Snowpiercer, which even got the support of cast members Tilda Swinton and John Hurt. The movie ended up changing distributors to Radius TWC, and director Bong's original full cut of the film was the one that was released in theaters on July 11th, 2014, 10 years ago today. But it only ended up playing on 356 screens total in the US. Still, the movie would go on to make $86.8 million worldwide, and beginning to end, it took seven years for the movie to come to fruition. Director Bong expressed great relief when this process was over, saying, I feel I have overcome a terrible disease, like cancer cells had occupied my body during that time. 
Critics love the movie. Today, 94% of the 266 reviews assessed by Rotten Tomatoes are positive. It didn't get nominated for any Oscars, but it made many critics top 10 lists for the year, as well as the National Board of Review's top 10 independent films of 2014. The film, as well as the original comic, inspired a TV series on TNT in 2020 that starred Jennifer Connelly and David Diggs. In the movie, the global ice age was caused by humans trying to stop climate change by introducing a substance into the atmosphere to block out sunlight. And in recent years, real Harvard scientists with partial funding from Bill Gates have been actually studying the effectiveness of using calcium carbonate to dim the sun's light.